Okay, so I want to make a quick video on something that's going to happen, let's say in 2050. Let's use that number as an example. So let's say the world encounters two huge problems. Number one, not enough water, which is already a problem, but in 2050, let's say it's going to be even worse. Number two, um, there's no food. Let's do number three, and we add to that that food prices, if you can afford it, are through the roof. So let's say a head of lettuce goes to um, $12.50. And that person says, okay, what do I grow? Do I, you know, increase my hosta collection? Do I grow Japanese maples? Do I have uh, another bunch of irises? Or do I buy an apple tree? Or do, buy, do I buy a peach tree? Or do I uh, start uh, collecting some heritage seeds? What I'm getting at is if there is a drastic change in food supply chains, who gets water and who doesn't get water? Let's say the government says, I'm sending out an inspector and you're not growing enough food on your land. You're gonna get less water. So let's say all this goes down, there's this huge push towards the ornamental plants getting pushed to the side and the fruit, fruit, food and fruit bearing plants getting a huge push forward. So gardeners have to say to themselves, okay, am I willing to give up my orchids? Am I willing to give up my, uh, my collection of uh, perennials? Whatever it may be, am I willing to give that up? You might not have the option. What happens is, if there is a, a, a statement from governments or from municipalities or from uh, provinces or from uh, states that food is number one, food is the most important thing, uh, we are going to give you water, we are going to push towards uh, individuals making more food, then if that does happen, then the ornamental business of, you know, ornamental trees and shrubs and perennials and annuals and all those things is going to take a big hit. I think consumers are going to make the big difference in that as well, is instead of buying a flat of uh, petunias, they're going to buy a flat of uh, kale or coal or kohlrabi, whatever it may be. So there is going to be a change, in my opinion, the change towards food versus ornamentals is a good change. Uh, biodiversity scares the daylights out of me. Uh, what happens if these types of plants aren't around anymore uh, just because they don't provide food? What happens to our ecosystems? It's going to be a tough one, but I think what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be a huge push towards uh, food bearing plants. I think this push towards these beautiful varieties of uh, rhododendron or whatever it may be might be on the way out. It's going to be a consumer play. So it's going to be what do people buy when they go to the garden centers, the big box stores. What they buy will make a big difference. Two things need to happen or three things. Food prices need to go through the roof like grown food and uh, there has to be some legislation on who gets water, how the water gets used, all those things is gonna be very important. You know, it's going to be a big change and I think it's gonna happen very quickly because I think uh, already a lot of grocery shelves are empty and I think also a lot of people are absolutely tired of the quality of the food. So if you bite into a nectarine or into a peach and it doesn't taste like a peach, how do they do that? That's the question, is how do they make a peach not taste like a peach? How do you do that? And uh, <clears throat> if you have a tomato that lasts in your fridge for eight weeks and it's still not showing any sign of decay, then you know gardeners and, and consumers are gonna ask a lot of questions. Again, these small gardens are gonna be called upon to feed the world. It's gonna be a, a very, a very clear fact that you know this small gardening is going to help this soil depletion that's going on in the middle of the United States and all that. It's going to be tough to keep feeding uh, the world population. Thankfully, the world population isn't uh, going crazy right now. 
it's uh, going to decline probably by 2050 and that's going to put take some pressure off feeding everybody but i think these small gardens acre and up are the future of uh, feeding the world and i think governments are going to help those small gardens instead of hindering them and there's going to be a big change so let's see what happens okay um another scenario might just be something totally different so you go to the grocery store and a head of lettuce is nine dollars and you say okay so if i buy a package of seeds i'm at, at let's say dollar 99 or 2.99 depending on how expensive the seeds are so out of that bag i get uh let's say 60 heads of good good heads of lettuce so what i'm getting at is the focus of uh gardening might shift itself without uh, any government interference or water rationing or anything like that it might just be the fact that people are realizing that they have to start growing their own food the moment they start growing their own food the ornamental plants are going to be pushed aside so what happens is uh, the uh, retailers and the nurseries and all these companies that are selling ornamental plants they they too are going to shift over to supplying to drive towards organic food so if water and if um, food gets so so expensive to, to, to use or is completely unavailable there might be a period of time where food is actually not available if I were a young person right now I would actually start to learn how to uh, grow in let's say pails or grow in containers or grow on my balcony whatever it may be the, this learning curve if you can do it now it's going to be a big advantage because uh, it might be one of the most important uh, requirements for survival it could get that bad so good clean water massively expensive uh, prices for food that is grown might push the ornamental plant market to the side and I think what's also going to happen is there's going to be an analysis by governments an analysis by you know world organizations by you know individuals themselves and what the individuals might realize is that they have to start growing their own food because uh, it really sucks going hungry and if people understand that you know, maybe it is better to grow food, uh, food instead of ornamental plants. Maybe a shift does have to happen in that direction. I will tell you something, the soils in the world are tired. They are so tired and so depleted that this chemical inspiration that's happening to keep this uh, wicked circle alive is uh, not going to work very shortly. It's going to be at one point where the soils are so chemically overloaded that the plants just won't grow. So this idea of using um, plants, plant science to allow them to grow in crappy, crappy soil, at one point there's an, a, a line of, of it not working anymore where the soil is too contaminated, the science can't keep up to create seeds that are very different. The focus might shift on people that have half an acre. Those people might be called upon to uh, grow the majority of the food. If you have a million people growing on uh, one acre and they have no ornamental plants on there and they're completely focused on growing food, so they're creating food forests by using fruit trees as the uh, cover crop, and vegetables and everything around it I, I i will tell you one one acre could feed easily 10 families 15 families easily and uh, that's even in cold climate so if if soil science shifts towards a more organized natural process of keeping our soils working um, then i think the food supply story could be dealt with um, especially in the uh, G5 countries where, you know, people can afford to garden correctly. So I think the trend towards uh, producing food is going to skyrocket. 
the effect it's going to have on ornamental plants is going to be something we have to see. But uh, I would say in 2050, 2050, I think there's going to be a big shift towards, um, how do I describe it? An understanding that something has to change and that food might be the most important thing in this world. And if food gets so expensive, then if you have a one acre garden and you're producing decent amounts of food, that might be better than any job you could ever have. It might make you uh, six digits. It uh, will definitely keep you ahead of the rest of the world because you have food for your own family. So we don't know what's going to happen, but I think I'm predicting there's going to be a trend that is going to push the ornamentals a little bit to the side and uh, focus on food trees and vegetables and you know smaller shrubs that provide uh, fruit. If, if that trend does happen, it's going to be very interesting and uh, it might be better for humanity is that this ornamental and uh, green grass, like having this perfect green grass in your front yard, if that gets phased out and water is used specifically to grow food, you know, the governments might actually send out an inspector and inspect your land and say, look, um, you need to reach a 70% uh, food growing ratio and right now you're at 58% food. We can't give you any water. So if there's a drive like that, then I think what's really going to happen is uh, this education about growing food is going to, you know, skyrocket. There's going to be a lot of young people that can't find work. They can't find work already. And they're going to go into this idea of uh, possibly finding a plot of land and growing food to make an income. And if there's enough of these people doing that, then the, uh, they, they might be the group that supplies the world with food.